Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Sigma Workshop. This is the third episode, and also will be the last one. So, Sigma is a cross-chain interoperability protocol, and the Sigma provides the fast, secure, and reliable cross-chain communication across the multiple blockchain ecosystems such as the EVM, Substree, and even more beyond other ecosystems. A little bit about myself. My name is Fred Lee. I'm the Sigma team developer who is in charge of the Substree side development. Today, we're, we're gonna. Look Look at the substrate sites because we have EVM networks. We also support the substrate and Polar ecosystem because we have Sigma substrate pilots implemented. Mostly, we have four main stuff today. Like we're gonna go through. We will have two demos on two different networks. First demo will be fungible token transfer from substrate, which is Rala. Rala is a test network Fala on substrate side, and from Rala to EVM on the EVM side, we will use the Growly, which is a public. Testnet of the Ethereum. This demo will showcase the Sigma on the Sigma testnet with the FAR token. Just in case you guys are not familiar with FAR token, FAR token is the native token of the Fala. And on Rala, we're still using FAR token, which is the native token of Rala, and using Sigma SDK script to do it. So in this demo, I'll show you guys some little bit codes on the SDK and how the SDK is construct the transactions, how do you configure the transactions, such as the resource IDs and recipient address and, and something like that. After the first demo, I'll talk a little bit about architecture, about how the everything works. Second demo will also showcase a fungible token transfer from EVM mainnet to substrate which is a Fala mainnet on the Sigma mainnet. But Fala in this demo will not be the final destination. Once the token reach to the substrate side, the Fala will still continue going through the XDM channel, then the final destination will be another parachain called Baystar. So basically in this demo, oh, we'll showcase on our mainnets, but still using FAR token, but it's gonna be between three different networks, one EVM networks and two substrate networks, but they're all on the mainnets. And we're also using XDM channels just to show you that the fungible token transfer from EVM cannot just go into the uh, Fala as a destination, but from the Fala, it can go to any other parachains on the mainnet through the XCM channel. Also for the second demo, I also explain the architecture about how everything works, including the XCM channel and everything on the substrate side. After the two demo, we'll show the details about the uh, Sigma substrate palettes and how it designed and how it's integrated with parachains. And uh, there will be a diagram to show you guys how everything works on a high level. So the last point of today is just a summarize of Sigma substrate in development and what you can be with as a community developer to use our Sigma SDK. So let's get everything started. First demo, fungible token transfer from Rala to Growly, which is substrate to EVM. So for the first demo, we what we need to, to, to see, we need to do a functional token. But how do we monitor if everything is going correctly, or everything is working? Because we're running from testnet Rala to Rolly. So we basically need to open at least two explore. One explore is the is the Rala Explorer. Rala is the file test nets on Rikuku. So here we have this uh, Rala test nets um, under Rikuku. We need to just make sure that we have the latest block and everything events and stuff. As you can see that it's producing the block and everything works fine. Second one is of course the Growly is scan this account as will be the recipient of our demo. What we're gonna see is a new transaction coming in and send some bar tokens to this address. Also there's the like token balance. It already have Growly far token, which has some balance here, but it will ideally should be increased after the demo. So these are two networks explore we're gonna see. Another one explore we will also need to see is our own Sigma protocol explorer. This explorer is for our testnet. As you can see, the URL is as a testnet. In the demo, we send the transaction on Rala and Rala should produce some events and the transaction will be like captured by the Sigma protocol and there should be a transaction here and eventually token will be sent here and there will be a transaction and token balance should be increased. Now let's go back to the, let's open this. As I mentioned, like this is the subject to EVM fungible token example. 
and I have the script here. What I did is I provide the correct RPC endpoint for Rala. And also I need to provide the sender's wallets, like credentials, either the JSON file or the numerical words that you need to unlock your wallet and send a token. So the recipient actually will configure here is d31 e89 some like this is the recipient address i just show you guys on the growing site another thing impo very important from previous episodes which is called resource id resource id is the only like identifier for the assets or tokens in the sigma ecosystem even though we have like crossing the different ecosystem to do the transfers, but this will be the only one token identifier. So as you can see, this all zero plus 1000, this one is currently configured with the FAR token and our destination chain is Growly's, Growly chain ID is FAR. Those are like basically the main configurations we you need to do on the SDK. And also there's my private numerical words for the, to unlock or to sign the transactions from the Rala chain to get SDK ready, and we prepare the account IPC provider from the RALA and the API provider. Then we compose the asset transfer transactions. We put everything we configured here as the tokens we're sending as far token, which is indicated in the source ID. But also we need to in see like how much we want to transfer. In this case, we transfer 10 token. As you can see, there's a lot of zeros which is because the far token is 12 decimal which is like we append like 12 zero after so this is the how much we sent and we also indicate the fee we get the fee from the sigma testnet for this transfer and currently we are configured with the basic fee which is the fixed fee amount just one far token then we build the transfer transaction. Next step is the sign and send transaction, which should be pretty straightforward. So now let's call this script from SDK, Young Transfer. As you can see, there are some blocks and current status is a broadcast. There's a transaction and the current status is ready, which means the network is ready. So now if we go back to the RAL Explorer, you can see there are four events related to our demo has been emitted already. So you can see Sigma Bridge deposit events has been emitted, right? So there's the, all the details that I'm sending from RAL and then fee collected, which means there are some bridging fees that have been collected because I'm sending 10 token and there'll be one token that is collecting as fee, which means that there will be nine tokens sending to the Broly side. Also, there will be other related substrate events such as X transfer, deposit, and withdrawal, which I'll talk about later. But for now, you guys just know that these are the other pallets working together with Sigma pallets, which also generate some you know, substrate events. Once you see all the events, that means substrate thing is done. Events generated, then the relayer will capture the transaction. You guys already see like there is a transaction block height 98119, so which is 98119 matching on the RALA Explorer, which means they're on the same block. As you can see, this transaction is pending and sending from RALA to Proly fungible token one minute ago and fee is one far token value is nine token token totally 10 tokens were sending so now we just need to wait for the transaction get finalized on the growly side a few moments later and at the same time we can take a look at the crash the growly explorer as you can see 34 seconds ago there are nine tokens of growly far token has been sent to this account by calling the contract which method the method is called execute proposal so so on the source chain, we have deposit. On the destination chain, we call it execute proposals. So once the proposal gets executed on the destination chain, that means the token gets either mint to the recipient or released to the recipient. Depends on the token type. On our explorer, it's transaction status shows executed. And also you guys see the transaction here. And there will be like nine tokens sending from our like smart contract account. And Let's see, there's nine tokens that actually increase the balance. Yeah, so everything works fine on our testnet for this demo. Now let's get back to the slides. And you guys see the fungible token on our testnet from South Street to the EVM. How does this work? So I made this diagram just to make everything more clear. As you can see, we have basically, let's see, like three main parts in this high level diagram. The left one is the EVM ones, and the right side is the South Street one. South Street one has two parts. 
upper part is the Polkadot ecosystem. The lower part is the Kusama ecosystem. But they are basically just like the different EVMs networks. They're all EVM compatible. Because we're running everything on Rala. Rala is just like another part of this substrate ecosystem. We're cool, cool. But for now, I'm just going to show you what everything happens on the mainnet. As you can see, we have different EVM networks. And these are mainnet, Kronos, and Base. And then in the middle part, we have our Sigma relayers which is like several relayers instance running like separately they're running on their own and then we have this different power chains together with the relay chains nodes on the Polkadot ecosystem side so because we're, we're sending everything on the substrate side so the entry point for this demo will be our SDK on the substrate set so as you can see there's the light yellow box here which is Sigma SDK you compose the transaction config the transaction the tokens the resource ID blah, 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 then you kick off this, you call this script, the SDK will sign and send the transaction, which is called the extrinsic deposit on the Fala parachain. So we have Sigma Palace integrated with Fala parachain. That's how SDK call the our palettes. So the deposit extrinsic actually is located on our Sigma palettes. Once the Sigma palettes receive this valid extrinsic, they will verify the signer, verify the signature, which is all belongs to the substrate side. Then once everything is ready, the logic is to verify if there's enough fee paid for this uh, deposit extrinsic. If it is, then it will proceed to deduct amounts from the sender's account. And also if this token is a reserved token, which means we need to put the token in our liquidity holder account somewhere and deduct from the sender's account to put it in the liquidity holder account. And if it's a non-reserved token, then we don't store the token. We don't hold the liquidity, we just burn the token. Then we emit the related events on the substrate side. Once the events get emitted, all the relayers independently listen to the substrate side from the RPC endpoint. So once they get the events, they will start to processing the events via the fees and the standards. And there are some uh, like necessary information contained in the, each event. And Sigma relayers capture the events, process the events, then they will start to do the MPC. MPC stands for multi-party computation. Like first in this step, they will all do the option signing. And if the MPC threshold is matching, and the last step is to call the proposal execution method on the destination chain. In our demo, the destination chain is the EVM. Yeah, that's why you guys see the proposal execution as the master name in the transaction on the Easter scan. So the proposal get executed then because the token is a lock and release token or a reserved token. So the reserved token will be sent from the liquidity holder contract account, then sent to the final recipient account on the growing side, on our destination side. So everything is executed on the EVM is in the logic in our Sigma contract facility contract. Basically, this is a how from high level, architecture level, how everything works. So let's continue our second demo. Second demo is going to be a little bit complicated, but still straightforward. Second one is the fungible token transfer from the Ethereum minutes to Fala minutes on Polkadot and then to Aster minutes on Polkadot. From EVM, Ethereum minutes to Fala, we're using Sigma protocol and from Fala, it goes through to the XCM channel channels that established between Fala and ASTAR. But this demo, what I have prepared are stuff that we need to look at for our demo. First off, we're using something called Subbridge, which is built by Fala team. It is a nice UI that you can, you don't need to do any code. You don't need to configure anything on the SDK. You just need to have this nice UI. And then you select the source network and the destination network. Then you just need to put the amount and unlock your wallet and determine who you want to see. And that's it. Right. So we're going to use this UI for our mainnet demo. Second one is, of course, the source chain explore, which is the Ether mainnet Ether scan. For this one, we're going to look at the sender account. So I have this account as a sender, which has some FAR token. Keep this in mind because we're on the mainnet. We're using like real FAR token. So I have some balance in this account and I'll see if the token get deducted from my account on the Ether mainnet. And then of course, we're going to use the 
Sigma protocol, but this time we use the mainnet Sigma protocol explorer. So there should be a transaction from Ethereum to Fala, how much token and the transaction hash. The next thing we need to look at is a Fala explorer. So the Fala explorer is located under um, Polkadot GS app, Polkadot then Fala, right? So we have this one. What we need to see here is we're trying to see the see the events because we, we need to see if our Sigma palettes capture the transactions and by executing the proposal and how much token is sending and where it's like forward into. And we're going to see some XCM events here, which sending from Fala to A star later. Yeah, so the Fala will be the middle network. The final network is A star. Of course, we will need to monitor the A star. A star is also under the Polkadot section and the A star network. So here on this page, what we need to do is that we need to see what's the Fala token ID, asset ID, right? So as you can see, this is a Fala token ID. We just need to copy this one and then we close this one. But still, we need to monitor the explorer of the A star, right? So now this is the explorer page of the A star. We need to see something here that the transaction get deposited to the final receiving account, and which is kind of hard because there are a lot of new events like which will surprise our events. High likely, we just miss it. So now another way to, to to make sure the transaction happens is to check the balance. So on the A star. We do because we're sending the far token. Far token is under the assets palettes. The recipient actually I'm sending is this one. So X Y E some this one. This address actually is is the A star address, right? So I'm sending to this address. Of course, we need the asset. Uh, we need the assets ID. So as you can see, now we have. 24.997, right? So because they have some decimals, 12 decimals. So 24.9 tokens we have at this moment, it will be in, should be increased if we send token from EVM side and if everything goes through. Now let's send the transaction on the subway UI. Uh, subway UI, as you can see, you can select the uh, source chain and it will automatically update the dropdown list to see uh, which destination chain it's, it's support currently. So we're sending from EVM network and we're sending to a star. So that's the thing. We're sending 10 FA token and we're sending to this recipient address on a star. So let's approve and yeah, send cap and approve. Let's just wait, wait a little bit. So on this page, you also can see there's a bridge fee. So which is the 0.001 is, and there's some destination chain fee, which is really to the XCM execution, estimation time and stuff. So it will just give you a roughly idea how much the transaction costs on the mainnet. After you approve, it tried to get the fees and stuff. And then finally, we just click the transfer and you confirm the transaction from EVM mainnet from this account to D5B with 10 token to A star with X, Y, E, that's, that's all correct. And then you can see the token is not 10 token on destination, it's like 9.9, .9, which means you pay some bridging fees. So this should be the amount that uh, the recipient received on the A star. So we confirmed, we submit. Okay, now subbridge UI job is done. Let's look at the source chain explore. Okay. Let's just refresh. Okay, you can see there's pending transaction deposit. Eight seconds ago, that is calling, oh, it's executed already. So it's sending 10 tokens follow up to some address that we don't know, but this address actually is one of our smart contract address deployed on the EVM mainnet, which is a bridge smart contract. And also if you see the details, you can see there are a calling deposits on the source chain with some parameters and all the details for the deposit. So now let's see if we have this transaction on the Sigma protocol explorer. Yes, we do. We're sending Ethereum to Fala. I should not to A star because I'll explain this part later in details. But for now, you guys just know that because we need to we deploy our Sigma palace on Fala. So the token needs to be sending from EVM and goes through to Sigma relayer sets, then to Ra to land on Fala and then Fala needs to forward the transaction through the XCM channels to the A star. That's why this part, you don't see the A star, but token will go to the A star and it's a fungible token.
And we sent in 10 FALA tokens, which was 1.111 US dollar at this moment, based on the current market price. And the fee is this is because we're sending on the Ethereum side, bridging fee is paid on the first chain side, which is the Ethereum minute. Then we can verify the transaction hash. It's 6992C, right? 6992. Yeah, so this is the transaction hash that, uh, that is matching with the first chain explorer and our Sigma protocol explorer. So what we do next is we just wait. On the minute, it might take few minutes. So what we can do is we keep checking the explore on the Fala and see if we can find something, but it might be spread by the coming up events. Okay, also at this moment, the token has not landed on the that final destination. So you can still see the like the token balance is 24,997. Okay. Oh, yeah. Now we see the Sigma bridge. Okay, here. There are a lot of transactions. There's a busy traffic on Fala. We see the proposal execution, right? Which means we should be also be able to see. So, okay, now it's executed. Yeah. So the final destination hash actually is um, produced. So on the sub scan, it will be much easier to see that we have this block. And also you can see that uh, extrinsic hash and execution key on a uh, substrate on Fala. And also you can see some really long data related to our proposal and the MPC signatures here. So how do we see the details is, let me see, yes. We search this block and then you will see all the extrinsic in the block. So there's a Sigma bridge pilots dot execute proposal transactions, extrinsics I need. So you can see there are a lot of events, but what we need to see here is the proposal execution. This is the entry point when the transaction ascending from the relayers to the destination substrate side. So this will get the transaction along with MPC add signatures with the proposal. This proposal will include the token transfer information about which token, how much the token transferred, and to whom the token will be transferred, something like that. Once the proposal execution executed, it will be executed X transfer forward. As you can see, this is another palace done by Fala team and forward the transaction to the final destination, which is Parachain 2006. 2006 is the Parachain ID of A star. And as you can see, the total token being transferred and then the X forward. Why do you call X tra transfer forward? Because the final destination, once the Sigma bridge first for this extrinsic, it says, uh, okay, it's not the final destination is not on Fala. It needs to be somewhere else. So it forward the transaction to another pallet. Then XCM bridge actually will jump in and it transfer the tokens from Fala to A star and depends on the final destination, right? So this is the transaction that we're seeing on Fala. But of course, on A star, there will be another event or pallet execution to accept this XCM execution. But so let's see if the balance is uh, increased. Yes, so the balance does increase. Now, before it was 24, now it's 34. Because we're sending roughly 10 tokens because the minor part of the fee is being charged. So it's like 9.9 .9 tokens, but roughly 10, so 20. 24, 34, which roughly like 10 tokens added to the final recipient account on the on the A-Star parachain. Let's go back to the slides. Okay, so second demo also working fine. And on the mainnet, on high level, architecture level, what is happening? From the EVM to the substrate roads, the same architecture, similar workflow, but now we're starting everything from the EVM side. And again, like we have our SDK, but in our case, we didn't use SDK, right? We didn't compose transaction within the configured in the SDK script, but how do we do it? But we use the subbridge was developed by Fala team. This subbridge UI actually is integrated with our Sigma SDK under the hood. So we're still actually using the Sigma SDK. After user indicates what you want to send from source chain, destination chain, token, how much token, those information are all packaged into the transaction sent to the SDK. The SDK actually needs to manage to sign using the user standard account and whatever. The flow basically is similar as what we see in the previous example. Then SDK will call the deposit smart contract call. Not extrinsic at this moment, but the deposit function on our 
solidity smart contract. So depends on the source chain, it's it's called the source chain smart contract, a Sigma smart contract. And then EVM produce the events, which will be captured by the Sigma relayer set and they do the job on their own and participate in the MPC TSS signing. If there's enough threshold MPC signing, then the MPC will finally call the proposal execution extrinsic. That's why we see on Fala network, we were trying to find this proposal execution event, which because you see the event, that means the MPC signing process is finished and also the extrinsics also execute successfully on the Fala side. So the Fala side, we have this Sigma Palace integrated. So the proposal execution endpoint is actually located in our palette. And once the execution finalized, it will produce some events like what we saw on our explore. Then follow like depends on the final destination in the transaction. It might go through the MPC, like what we showed on our demo. You can just send tokens on Fala, then there will be no XCM parts because the final destination is on Fala. So they will just deposit tokens to the uh, recipient ad account. But in our demo, the final destination is not Fala. So our pilots forward the transaction to the X token forwarder that forward to determine the final destination is 2006, which is the parachain ID of ISTAR on Polkadot, then call another XCM bridge pilots to forward the XCM bridge to the final destination parachains. And then the XCM M logic will uh, capture the XCM message and execute and deposit to the tokens. It uh, depends on token types too. Like in our case, the FAR token is like a non-reserved token on ASTAR. So it will mint token to the final recipient account. So we have seen the two uh, functional tokens on Sigma testnet and Sigma mainnet from different directions from subtree to EVM, from EVM to subtree, and even go further uh, using the XCM channels. You might wondering like how the architecture or the integration works for the Sigma subtree palettes. There will be another diagram to show you subtree palettes from high level, of course. Also, you're going to see like there are other palettes developed by other team, which is important to integrate with our Sigma pilots to work together. So in this diagram, you can see there are different colors box. The light yellow box is all the different Sigma pilots. And on the left side, we have this uh, Fala subbridge pilots, including the XCM logic, and which will be used uh, if the destination chain is on our parachains. And most important thing actually here is the runtime. Runtime actually is a guide to determine what's the final behavior of our pilots. So everything needs to be integrated. But for the Sigma pilots, what we have, we have bridge pilots, which is the main logic, including the deposit, including the proposal execution, and and MPC signature verification and stuff like that. The main job of the bridge pilots is to bridge the assets, depends on the asset type. And it needs to work with the runtime to see how the deposit or withdraw the token or mint or burn the token works. It all determined by the runtime. And we also have fee handler router pallets. It's the like fee router. So basically we have different fee strategies. We have based fee strategies, which is a fixed amount. We have percentage fee strategies. And once the fee strategy determined based on the token, based on the uh, network, so it will go through the fee charging logic, which is fee pallets. This fee pallets is not only one pallet, it's several pallets. Each pallet is taking care of one fee strategy. And there will be independent pallets, which is called access segregated pallets, which is taking care of all the securities, including admin extrinsic permission, permission granted or like a grant to the callers and also some management like a bridge pause on pause, retry the felt extrinsic, some kind of like an admin level of operations or executions on our Sigma set. If you can see, there are two flows actually in this diagram. The blue ones are the flow that's from EVM to the substrate, which is our second demo. As you can see, the flow comes, it, it goes to the bridge pallets because that's where the main logic is located to do the operations on the asset. And once the asset has been done, either mint, burn, withdraw, or deposit to the middle stage system derived account, then it will proceed to the Fala subbridge pallets. So determine the final destination. If that's Fala, then it will deposit the token to local recipient. If this needs to go to XCM, 
Then they will compose the XCM message and the SCM fees and execute the XCM message. Then the message will be sent to the XCM channel, which is opened between Fala parachain and the remote parachain. Another flow is sending from substrate to EVM. So on this one, the endpoint actually from, if you look at the Fala or the substrate side, it's coming in from the whole substrate network or ecosystem. So this error means that there might be transactions coming from remote parachains to Fala and Fala to Stigma. But it might be also just to send in from Fala as the like a local extrinsic. For example, if user can either able to send tokens to EVM by if he has tokens on A star, which will go through the XCM channel to Fala and to Sigma pilots and to Sigma, or either a user has tokens just on Fala and Parachain. He can don't need to go through the XCM because he's on the Fala already. Then he just call the deposit extrinsic so that there will be no XCM channel involved in this case. But the same, once the, everything is getting into the Sigma integrated parachain, the logic will be the same. It just needs to determine the fee strategy and collect the fee and logic and token or asset operations based on the runtime integration and then emit the substrate events. So that's basically what's the high level of substrate pilots and how many pilots we have and how our pilots integrate or work with other parachains pilots. Fala is the example here, and Fala is the parachain that's already integrated with our pilots. So as you can see, you need the pilots and your own parachains we integrate with our Sigma pilots, and also we need to define runtime to define a final behavior. We talked a lot today, right? In general, in a summary, what Sigma Substrate Pilots provide. Maybe another question is, as a developer, you can build with it. Based on this, came up with four main points just to inspire you as a developer, as a community that you can build with our Sigma Substrate Pilots. The first one is the entry point of the Sigma words from EVM. Like I said, our pilots, we're not running a parachain. We have a set of pilots, but pilots need to be integrated to a parachain and the parachain needs to be functioning on either Polkadot or Kusama or even on like Western or Rokoko testnet. So it's the endpoint of the subs rewards from the EVM because the Sigma provides the whole set of the EVM scene, but also provides the MPC, decentralized relayer set in the middle and the Sigma subs palette. So as a community developer, we need to integrate on our uh, subs side. The second thing is the really to the security. It's the MPC, multi-party computation signature verification before the execution. If you guys do remember in the diagram, I mentioned everything is signing MPC TSS process is signing off chain. It's not on chain. So the off chain signing, then that will be a final message call to the destination chain for the execution. But before the execution, we need to verify if this MPC signature is valid. How to determine it's valid? First of all, it's one signature, but the signature is produced by sending from multiple computation parties. In our case, multiple computation parties is our Sigma relayer. Only if there are enough values valid signature from each of the relayer. Let's say we have five, a threshold is three. So at least we need to three signatures signing from the either three of the relayers so that then we can compose the final MPC signature so we can verify. MPC signature verify logic is already in the substrate pilots so that the community developers, you don't need to care that much. You just need to know that MPC signature will need to be verified before the execution. The third one is the customizable runtime. Like I said in the last slide, the runtime is the final behavior determinator that we have the token logic, we have asset logic in the pilots, we have proposal execution in our pilots, we integrate to the parachain pilots and XCM, whatever. But there will be another bigger part in the runtime that determine which asset transactors, for example, we want to use and something like that. So it's like we determine basically, if you think from high level, we determine half of the behavior in the pilots, but another half of the behavior is a customizable determined in the runtime. Last part is the connecting with the XCM parachain integration. Follow as the example, because you don't need to use the XCM if you don't want to go further to other parachain. In that case, the token or the message will just land on the local parachain and that's it. But if you want to go further, 
then XDM is the open option for the community because like I said, the last point, four point and the first points together, you can think like once the substrate pilots is the entry point coming in and once coming to the whole substrate world, then the XDM will be another part that you can push you go further or allow you to go further. There will be a lot of like possibilities. Yeah, I guess that's it for today's workshop. And so we covered a lot. If you do have any questions, feel free to message us or message me on the Discord or check out our GitHub repos, everything. Well, we basically do everything in an open source way. So we have smart contract, we have subtree pilots, we have relayers. So yeah, please keep in touch. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.